That was etude number 11 of the Rose 32 Studies for Clarinet, the gold standard for all clarinet etudes. My name is Dr. Tom Labadorf, and I'm the instructor of clarinet at Central Connecticut State University in New Britain, Connecticut. I'll be offering a few tips on how to perform this piece, but for, for now, what I would like for you to do first is to make sure you number all the measures in your, in your edition so that you know which measures that I'm referring to. The first thing you want to do before you even play the piece is to look up all the terms that are on the page. For example, the tempo marking at the very beginning is marked larghetto, which means moderately slow. It's, sl it's faster than a largo, but not quite as fast as an andante. So you need to choose the tempo that is appropriate for that particular piece. The, pe the tempo that I used I believe is just about right. The other terms that you will notice is, for example, one that is listed under the first measure is, is entitled conduolo, which means with grief. So that gives you an indication of how the piece should be played in emotionally. A little bit of teardrop wouldn't hurt in the performance of this. Another Another terminology that you'll find in measure 13, and then later on in the piece, is one that is a French abbreviation of the words très largement, which means to broaden or to emphasize. And what you want to do in that case is slow down your tempo, but make it very dramatic as the articulations are indicating. The last term that you will probably not know, that's, it's underneath the last measure of the piece. It is called morendo, which means to die away, which implies that you would gradually get softer and slow down the tempo to emulate the feeling of dying away. Now, in this etude and all other etudes, probably the most important thing that you can do is to practice with a metronome. The metronome is going to make sure that you play the piece with, with the right kind of rhythm with the, and making sure that the rhythms are exactly in time and uh, uh, the piece itself has a good sense of rhythmic integrity. I suggest that you start the piece with the quarter note equaling about 75 and so that you would play through the entire piece at that very slow tempo and see if you can flesh out some of the more difficult spots. For example, in measure seven, you'll notice some sixteenth notes. You will probably want to put a X in the margin for that spot so that you know to go back to it to work it out. Other places you will find that are, will need some more attention will also deserve an X in the margin. And then from that point, you go back after you've played the piece to uh, work out the more difficult sections, starting with your metronome at 75, playing it five times in a row, no mistakes, and then moving the metronome up another five notches to 80, play it five times in a row, no mistakes. In other words, if you play it four times and you miss the fifth time, you need to start it over with, at 80 and then counting so that you're playing five times in a row. This will ensure that you're playing the piece more times correctly than incorrectly. And that means when you're in the pressure of an audition or a lesson that you will default to the more correct performance of it. A couple of fingerings I think that you should consider when you're playing this piece involve some of the high notes. For example, whenever you're approaching a high D coming in from a lower register, you need, you need to half hole the high D. In other words, you finger the regular D which is left hand, thumb and register key, two, three, right hand, one, and the E flat key. The half hole is with the first finger that covers just half of the tone hole underneath the first finger. That will guarantee that your slur going from the lower register will be smooth. The other one is the high F fingering. The high F is generally played using the long fingering, which is this. Thumb, register key, one, two, three, A flat, and then on the right hand, one, two, and three. That's the long fingering, but I find that that fingering gets to be a little stuffy. 
I prefer to use a different fingering. The different fingering actually is a lot like the regular fingering, just you add the A key. In other words, thumb and register key, two, three, A flat, and on the right hand, the E flat key. And then you add the A key and half hole the first finger so that it comes out very clear. That actually is a much better fingering for me. It depends on your situation and which fingering works better for you. So that's what I recommend for practicing this particular piece. Good luck and hope you enjoy the etude. That was the etude number 14 from the Rose 32 Studies, another great piece. The one thing that I can recommend for you to do in this, and particularly uh, important, is to make sure that you, that you um, work with a metronome and make sure that all of your rhythms are perfectly correct. The only time that you would be out of time in this particular piece is when you need to take a breath. In that case, it's always appropriate to take a little bit of time so that you can make sure you get a very good breath. And speaking of breaths, I recommend that you go through and listen through the performance that I just did one more time and carefully mark in your music where the breaths, uh, breath marks were taken so that you can make sure that you can give the whole piece uh, its musical integrity while giving yourself enough air to pr perform the piece well. One of the things that is the real test of this particular piece is the performance of the trills. The trills are particularly difficult because they're followed by two grace notes and a slur that leads into the next measure. The timing of that trill is, is critical because you need to get your fingers in the right place in order to execute the grace notes. I recommend trilling so that you stop the trill just for a split second before you go ahead and e execute the next, the next grace notes. That way you can determine a very clean trill and clean progression into the next measure. You can practice this by practicing with a metronome very slowly like this. The one in measure 10 is a slight, is a different note, but it has the same idea. So if you hear, listen very closely, you can hear that I stop the trill just slightly before I execute the grace notes. The trill in measure 36 is a different kind of situation, and I recommend that you give that trill only two shakes so that <coughs> you have enough time to put in the grace notes. In other words, practicing this slowly. And again. 
again. So those are, those are the suggestions that I have for you. The most important of all of these, of course, is to practice with a metronome and make sure that you give the right number of time, right amount of time to each of the rhythms that is deserved. Thank you and enjoy the etude.